Hey guys, we're here in Boise, Idaho at a famous tiny house. This is the Mini Motives Tiny House designed and built by Macy Miller. Let's go check it out. <laughs> Not sure. Uh, okay. <laughs> so this is Macy, and this is hey. your daughter Hazel, correct? Yep. This is yep. Hazel, and this is your tiny house. This is my humble abode. <laughs> so first things first, tell us about the size of your tiny house. So originally, my tiny house is 196 square feet. Just recently added on, and it is now 232. 232. 232 square feet. So what's the so, length and the width? Uh, so it's built on a flat bed. You okay, sweetie? Uh, mm -hmm. A flatbed uh, gooseneck trailer. Um, so the flatbed part is 24 foot and then it's got a 5 foot dovetail. So the full length is 29 feet because I built out over the dovetail. Mm -hmm. um, and then I went the full 8.5 foot wide. So it's a pretty big tiny house. Yeah, yeah. but <laughs> you have quite a few people living in here, right? Yes. So you have yeah. Hazel, well, of Hazel, course. Hazel, my partner James, myself, and soon to be this little munchkin. Mm -hmm. Hopefully in a couple weeks. Yes. <laughs> And are you expecting a boy or a girl? Boy. Boy this time. Yep. A little boy, a little girl. Yep. Two and adults. We'll and a Great Dane. And a Great Dane. <laughs> How big is the Great Dane? He's a two-year-old, 150-pound Great Dane. She's, she's trying to show you her room. Yeah. <laughs> Turn the light on. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Where's your bed? Oh, it's over there. That's my bed. That's your bed. So what? this is just a repurpose. The the co-sleeper that I used up in there, I just kind of dissected it and reused the parts. She moves around in her sleep a lot, so I wanted her to be safe in there. What's this? This is her table. It's your table? <laughs> we just built this. This is a, our last week's project. Originally, I was going to have like a dresser here, mm -hmm. uh, but as I was building it, she really liked kind of having the floor space and, you know, playing around here, so I was like, well... I could do like one square foot and have clothing and diapers and everything for both kids. Right, yeah. It's pretty efficient to use the space. Of so storage space there. Each kid has, you know, two things. Mm -hmm. And then diapers and wipes and whatnot. And can you describe what this used to be? This yeah, this used to be my patio. So the trailer had the dovetail, which is kind of a slopey part on the back that is used for loading like heavy equipment a lot of the time. So it's structural but it's sloped and I didn't really want to build it up and make it, you know, part of the tiny house at, at the onset of the design. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of had the option to cut it off or build a, a deck on it and then I, I wanted to do the deck. So right. I built kind of this nice covered deck that had a little reading nook in it. And I loved my patio, but I love my kid more. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so um, it was kind of always meant to be expandable, you know, when I started no, this. No. I knew that, you know, the time I want kids might overlap with the time I'm going to live in the tiny house, so I wanted the flexibility um, for the future. So it was always a two-year experiment, and quite honestly, I thought it would be difficult to make it two years, you know. Um, but I, I set myself up, I took one year's worth of rent payments, built this house, and then I'm going to live in it for two years, so it pays itself back and then some. And uh, we're at two and a half years now that we're living in it. But um, with this addition, we're going to try to get another three or four years out of it. Mm -hmm. um, and James and I are both in architecture, so kind of our passion is, you know, alternative construction. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've got plans on this lot that we're on to build a shipping container house next. Which oh, is, cool. It'll still be pretty small, but it's it's definitely upsized from Well, this. yeah, she's going to grow out of this yeah. in a few years. You right? know, mm -hmm. eventually they're going to want a little more space. <laughs> this is a back door. Yeah, I wanted access. The most, you know, problematic things in a house are most likely to happen in the kitchen, and I didn't want the kitchen to be between me and my kids. So this was critical for me. Mm-hmm. Since this is an extension, it actually has different siding than the rest of your house. Yeah, I wanted to keep the integrity of the original design. Um, mm -hmm. and there's actually a, a lot of people that have told me they're bummed I didn't keep the siding. Oh. And I, I intentionally offset it. It's a little bit smaller than the rest of the house. And then I changed the material so that you could see the original form. Mm -hmm. And this is, 
you know, not trying to be a part of that. It's something totally different because it's cool to see how life changes, you know. This is your favorite page right over here. It's a kitty. It's a kitty here. Ah. <laughs> when I was building my house, it was important to me to use the furniture I had existing already. And I had a king size bed and it was a brand new king size bed. So I fit that into my tiny house. Um, I built the loft part up over the gooseneck area. And then I also designed it in so the dog could get up to the bed because he used to sleep up there before we had kids. Mm -hmm. um, so the stairs are actually designed for him and he still sneaks up there constantly. Um, but yeah, so I have a, the king size bed, loft area, just, you know, pretty simple mm -hmm. light. I keep my laundry up there. I've got a couple laundry baskets. This wall didn't used to be here. Um, originally, I didn't have kids when I moved in and mm -hmm. so I wanted the nice open space. But then when the kids came, um, I, I did co-sleeping with them, so, uh, or with Hazel. Uh, she had her little co-sleeper up there, but I, as soon as she started to move, I needed some sort of safety device for her. So essentially, this is just making the bed a big crib. <laughs> yeah. And there, there was a lock on it, and, you know, we could just close it off, but she can maneuver the stairs just fine now. We do have little bumpers on there because she's still kind of spastic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She'll run her head into it if she's not careful. <laughs> right. So I kept the living room pretty open. I like to rearrange. I've actually had this living room rearranged in about nine different orientations. So I purposely didn't do built-in furniture. This is all just, you know, flexible stuff. But also I can stuff stuff underneath it when yeah. I need to, which is handy. So I built in this kind of bank of clothes storage and this is like the hanging clothes, dresses. Um, and then, <laughs> yes, you can pull all of those out. We've seen it happen. <laughs> <laughs> and then all of the drawers for, you know, my folding clothes, pants, and shirts and stuff. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Some of my favorite parts. <laughs> so these, uh, I actually made those um, with my brothers. That's that's my whimsy in the tiny house. You made those? Yeah, we took a glass blowing class. So each one of these, like I made this one and uh, my three brothers made those. That's so, so cool. Yeah, it, it was originally mason jars, which I liked also, but they were always just temporary. And mm -hmm. I've always wanted to take a glass blowing oh. class. I rented a lot of apartments and houses that I really hated the kitchen. I like cooking. Um, so I actually do use four burners quite a bit. I get that comment all the time. Uh, you'll never use those four. I do constantly. I'll, I'll cook a meal and have them all going. I've taken pictures to prove it. Um, but I also wanted an oven um, so I could bake things. And so this area was super important to me because I, I needed a functional kitchen. It has more counter space than any of the rentals I've had. And it, really, it's just kind of laid out perfect for me. It's it's how I cook. I've got the refrigerator right here and then, you know, I can do my stuff. It, it's a good one-person kitchen. If James gets in here while I'm cooking, we, we battle it out a little. Mm -hmm. But um, but no, it, it works really well. I have all of my appliances or uh, my cooking things right here. Um, I just stuff things in the storage. I don't really even necessarily need these. I've got some mixing bowls and stuff down there. Um, but most of what I use is kind of at this level. Mm -hmm. And open shelving makes it look bigger. Makes it look bigger and, and feel not so caved in. And I actually, this used to be exposed metal and it got kind of dark over time. And um, just painting those white even just makes it feel so much lighter to me. Yeah, you have a lot of white in here. Is this drywall? Yeah, it's drywall, which is the big no-no. You can't do drywall in a tiny house. But um, I used 3 8 inch drywall mm -hmm. um, to save on the weight. It's, you know, if I can build a house, I can patch a drywall. That's the, my theory. Right. Um, I haven't had any issues with it for two and a half years. I haven't had to patch anything. Mm -hmm. um, we did only move it one time, about 18 miles. So it hasn't been on the road a whole bunch. I don't know that I'd recommend it if you were constantly moving, but... There's no reason you can't do it. And I actually used quarter inch in the kids' edition. I was mm -hmm. kind of scared to do that the first go around. Um, but this was so easy to work with. We tried it in there and it worked great. This is my sliding door. <laughs> I'm cheap. And so this is what I came up with for, you know, bar door hardware is really expensive. This is not. It's just plumbing fittings on the top. The panel is on casters and then it's got hooks to hold it to the wall. 
If I remember correctly, you were able to build this for pretty cheap, right? Yeah, so the goal was one year's rent payments, and that was ten to $12,000, and I built it for $11,416. Wow. Um, but that I didn't know that would include all the appliances, and that included all of the appliances and everything, too. So wow. we did pretty awesome finding good deals. The trailer was used as, you know, the foundation, but it, it took about two months to get it to where it was buildable, which is really defeating. You know, that, that beginning energy when you're starting your tiny house, you're like so enthusiastic. And so for the first two months of it, I'd go out and there was just a trailer. <laughs> it kind of stunk, you know. Um, so it's, it's a lot of work. I got a really good deal. I saved thousands of dollars. So it was critical for me because it, it mattered for my budget. Um, would I do it again? No. <laughs> There's a lot of things I did the first time that I'm glad I did them once, but I would never do them again. This, you know, for me, it was a learning project. I had a hard time going full on to the composting toilet. I also wanted to live in an urban area, and they frown upon you, you know, making compost piles in your yard sometimes of human waste. Um, so. This is the most expensive part of my tiny house. My toilet is $2,000, and it's because it's passed government testing to be certified sanitary waste control. Um, it's not passed here because it's never been challenged, but it's been passed in places like Portland and California. Um, so the idea being that if they called me on it, I would have a leg to stand on and maybe could make the argument. And then I like my showers, mm -hmm. and so I wanted an oversized shower. So it's 36 by 42. It's a nice shower. It used to be black. I painted it white with special paint, which is awesome. I like how it turned out. Yeah, I like uh, it too. I didn't even know you could do that. Somebody sent that to me. I was like, I want to do that. Is it tile <laughs> and you were just able to paint it? Yeah, it's tile and it's a rust oleum product that mm -hmm. is for tile and, and showers. And it's super durable. I've been really impressed with it so far. Mm -hmm. um, this, I was going to make it into a bathtub because the kids, you know, they don't do showers. They do baths. So... We have a Rubbermaid bucket in there. That's where the kids get their baths. <laughs> okay, so this actually used to be your porch here. Yep, so this was a, a five by eight enclosed porch and I used to just have a chair there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we made it the kids' room. Right. And you know, I used corrugated metal just because I wanted to do that. It was kind of daunting to me uh, for some reason. I couldn't picture how to do it necessarily in my head, so I was like, well, we're going to do it, we're going to learn it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's harder than it looks. <laughs> we kind of thought it would go up simple, you know, once we did the research on it. It took a lot of time to do it. And this is where I kind of, I set this wall back intentionally so you can still see that corner. Flash. It's weird if it, it changes materials on the same plane, mm -hmm. so I set it back a little. It was worth the three inches. Right. <laughs> You have really big windows, actually, for a tiny house. Did yeah. you get these reclaimed or on I get, a deal? I get them free. So, oh. yeah, they're brand new windows I got from a company. They said, come take as many as you want. And uh, so I did. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> what kind of siding is this? This is also free. There's 83 shipping pallets that wow. I disassembled. That's one of those things that I wouldn't do again. A lot, <laughs> a lot of work there. A lot of work. a ton of work. Yeah. And I wish I didn't stain them. It looked so cool before I stained them because it was all variegated. Mm -hmm. But then I stained them to be uniform and they all turned uniform. So Right. Are there lacing strips underneath there? Or? Yeah, so it's a rain screen assembly. So the they're not actually the water barrier. There's a water barrier underneath it. Uh-huh. You can play with the water. Um, and yeah, there's it's furred out a quarter inch so that the rain's allowed to kind of go behind it and mm -hmm. out. Yep. And then your lime green door. My lime green door. I just like lime green. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of where that came from. Um, and it kind of just became my accent color because everything I buy tends to be that color anyways. All right, Macy. Well, thank you so much for taking us through your house. Absolutely. Mini Motives. She's also got a really informative website that you guys should check out. And, you know, whenever you guys build that shipping container, we're going to have to come back and do another tour. Awesome. All right. Sounds good. Thanks. Thanks a lot. See you guys later. Come on, give me an awkward hug here. Awkward, awkward hug! <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the best awkward hug I've ever had. Uh, yeah, I think so. Because I actually yelled awkward ah! hug. <laughs>